growth. Have you ever considered your growth as the law of nature? God has your back. Hmm. But taking a pause to wonder if that can totally be true in all its merits. Most of us see his work in our lives to be too slow. Like James Dobson rightly put it, God can be agonizingly slow to carry out his promises in our lives. As his child, he is always looking out for us, even as this is proven in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15, NLT version saying, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. The thing is, God honors every of his law. And one of these laws is the law of growth. Psalms chapter 74, verse 17, variants of the Bible declares, You set all the boundaries of the earth. You made the summer and the winter. This law was instituted to form everything it made. You are one of these beautiful creations and the best. It is the same reason he made us in his own image. But in order for man to reproduce its kind, he will have to stay in the womb for a period of nine months. Crawl, stand, and walk before we can ever put together the ability to run. It is the process that forms and prepares us for life. When this is violated, we cannot become or reach the full potential of our designs. Everything that forms our places in life, economical, political, our position as a man, husband and a father, or as a woman, wife and a mother, this also submit to this process, but no one ever gets it when the internal being, your spirit, does not have this understanding. Hence, the reason we find it very difficult to cope with the challenges we daily face. Sometimes when mama says, it is not the right time to have a boyfriend, we feel mama doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know how I feel about him. So we follow the path of our feelings, which brings pleasure to our immediate appeal, but throws us into the corridor of a future so we might not have answers to cope with. Sons of Solomon chapter 8 verse 4 advises, O daughters of Jerusalem, I adjure you, do not arouse or awaken love until the time is right. There are parts we go through that by design exposes us to sin no matter who we are. Our generation by design has raised us not to learn the strategies of patience so we don't learn the victory and beauty that comes with just being patient. Being in this path alone exposes us to multiple challenges with no solution. So we christen our positional errors, mistakes. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, the Berean Study Bible admonishes, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandment, for they will add length to your days, years and peace to your life. Never let loving devotion or faithfulness leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and man. The internal being is weak when it is not nurtured to be strong or allowed to grow through the process. The internal being is what makes us understand and survive the external challenges we face. When we create shortcuts to success in life, we destroy who we really are. Let me say that again. The internal being is what makes us understand and survive the external challenges we face. When you create shortcut to success in life, you destroy who you really are. The man of character doesn't just appear from the sky, but daily learns through the renewal of mind by the word of God. Apparently, the only way. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Berean study Bible also reveals, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, on no account on account of god's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to god 
which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Compromise makes you weaker. And because we don't know what we lose, we just get by. Everyone with the understanding of what lies ahead will always complain less. God prepares the Israelites for the battle is required to take over the promised land. As you can see in Exodus chapter 13 verse 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistines' country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they will change their mind and return to Egypt. And the question begs, why will God search all through the earth and decide it was the land of the Anax, the Amalekites, Hittite, Jebusite, the Amorite, and the giant that was the right place for a timid nation, like a young nation of Israel. But you see, God will never cease to give us the best, no matter who currently controls it. Read Numbers 13, verse 28 to 29. Numbers chapter 13, verse 28 to 29. As Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11 to 12 also reveals, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure then you will be you will not be sluggish but will imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised the challenge we face throughout life are the process towards what we were designed to be god bless you real good